Today on The Joy of Editing, it's TK Friday, and today I'll be doing a full edit of Mount St. Helens. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing. It's TK Friday again, my favorite day of the week. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Today I'll be doing a full edit of Mount St. Helens. This image comes to us by... Bruce Rawlinson. Thank you, Bruce, for the use of your image. You can download the image and the PDF notes, and then you could try this edit out for yourself. It's a great way of introducing yourself to the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, and it's a great way of learning how to utilize it in your workflow. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Okay, then let's get started. I always start out here in Lightroom, and this is the way Bruce's image looks right out of camera. And then I went ahead and processed it using a linear profile for Bruce's camera. This is a Sony 7R M3. This is a big file. This is like a 42 megapixel file, so it's pretty large. Now, when you download the image, it's going to look just like this. And, of course, I'll remove this little dust spot up here. You know, that way you don't have to mess with that. And we're going to remove the fence, but I'll use the uh, new TK Gen fill panel to get rid of that. But I just basically use the linear profile and then I go ahead and click on auto and then I make sure I'm not clipping any blacks or whites. And of course, I always use lens corrections and just basic sharpening, no noise reduction. This image was shot at uh, ISO 100. I did do a slight crop on this image, as you can see, just to straighten it up a little bit. And that is basically it. And once I get this far, I'm ready to edit in Photoshop. I just right click on the image, go to edit in, edit in Photoshop 2024. I'm already in Photoshop, so I'll meet you there. Welcome to Photoshop. We're ready to get started. Now, as I said, uh, we're going to remove this little fence here because I don't think it really helps the image here. But I left this in. When you download the image, you're going to have this fence. So I thought you could give this a try. Hey, don't forget to download the TK Gen fill panel. It's absolutely free. Just click on my affiliate link in the... Uh, description below this video and you can pick it up. It's really, really great. I'm going to use this little brush tool right here. This is really cool. So I'm going to click in this and now we have to click a percentage value and I've made a bunch of videos already on the TK Gen fill panel. Go to my YouTube channel and check some of those out because these percentage buttons are really cool. But I'm going to use a percentage like 65%. It's going to blend better into the image. I'm just going to remove this and with this brush, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller about that size and I'm just gonna paint over this area like this and very simple and easy to do and then all we need to do at this point is click generate but you want to pick the brush first so click in the brush and then you can choose any one of these percentages up to a hundred percent and I'm using 65 because I think I'll get a better blend with that and then we'll click Generate, and Photoshop does its thing here. It takes about 20 to 25 seconds. You'll get three different variations, and you can pick the one you like the best. Okay, so there's my first variation. Looks really good. And if you click this right arrow button, you can see there's our second variation. That's nice, too. And here is our third. You know what? I think, I think I'll go with the first variation. And now what I'll do is you see this button right here. I'm going to click this button. That'll just flatten our image. And now we can go ahead and start our edit. Again, download that TK Gen Fill panel. Uh, just click on my affiliate link in the description below and watch some of my training videos on it. They'll help you get started using it. It's really great. You're going to love it. Now, obviously, we're working on a landscape image with a foreground and a sky. I like to set myself up for success. What I mean by that is save out a foreground and a sky channel because I want to balance and contrast out this image. It's my starting point, and I do this on every image. If you watch my videos every TK Friday, you know I do this all the time. So what we'll do is... Hold your command or control key down and click on the sky button on either the combo or CX panel. It'll make you a sky mask and it'll save it right down there in channels for you. Hold your command or control key down again and this time double click it. 
the sky selection will get inverted and it will save a foreground mask down in channels for you. Pretty cool. For the first step, I need a Midtones 3 mask to protect me from clipping shadows or highlights. A lot of times I'll just come up here to the luminosity mask button and click this. I think the masks are a little bit better, but this is a big file. And to save a little bit of space, I'm going to use blend if this time. So I'm going to click this blend if button right here. This creates blend if masks for you, but you can also send out just blend if to a layer without using a mask. And I'll show you how that works. And all you need to do is click on midtones three, and then we need to output this to a color grading tool because I use the color grading tool for the uh, balance and contrast adjustments and color grading. So hold your shift key down and click this button right here for the color grading tool. And you'll notice it didn't put the mids three mask here, but you notice this little symbol. This is telling us that we have blend if on this layer and it's set for midtones three to protect me from clipping shadows and highlights. Now, if you have a mask here, you might say, oh shoot, I have a mask here. I didn't hold my shift key down. What you can do is you can click this button right here. It'll remove that mask and then you can X out of the color grading tool. And then you could just come right here. This is for edit blend if on a layer, click this button and then click midtones three. X out of here and then go back to the color grading tool and you'll fix your mistake. Now I do have this reveal all mask on here. So what I need to do is come to my mask calculator and either the combo or CX panel, click it and you'll notice we have sky and foreground, which are our channels down here. So I'm going to work in the foreground first. So I'm going to click on foreground and then click this button to apply it to that mask right there. So we'll click this and now you can see it's only affecting my foreground. Pretty cool, right? Now I can do my color grading and the blend if will protect shadows and highlights from clipping and I'll keep my edit only on to the foreground. Well, I hope you got all that. Now let's make an adjustment. I'm gonna start out with midtone. So click this button right here, the gray circle. And what I'm going to do is drag this to the right a good bit, almost to the end. I'm gonna take it up to like 59 right there. And see how my midtones lighten up. Now there's a really handy little button here on the uh, color grading tool, this little picker eyedropper here. So click on this. And what I want to do is click right here and sample whatever color is right here. And you can see it right there and click OK. And you'll notice it places a point right there. And you notice the image got a little bit more yellowish green. So that's pretty cool. So look, here's the before and here's the after. So that's nice. So that is the midtones. And now I need to build up some uh, dark contrast. So we're going to click on the shadow button, click on that. And I'm going to take this slider over to the left to somewhere like right about here, minus 24 to be exact right there. So here's my before and here's my after. And that's it. That's all I'm doing to the foreground. Next, we're going to work on the sky. Now I need to get to the multi mass panel. Where are your multi mass panel? Well, you're hidden behind the color grading tool. Click this X. Nothing changes here. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click this button right here to make a blend if mask. However, I won't use it as a mask. You could if you wanted to. I'm going to go and click on midtones three. Remember, hold your shift key down and click on the color grading tool. That puts that midtones three as a blend if adjustment right on the layer, which is really nice. And now what we do is open up the mask calculator, click this button right here. This time we want to work on the sky. So click on sky and click this button to apply it. And now it's applying it only to the sky. I'll start out with midtone, so I'll click on the midtone button and I'm just going to drag this to the left just a little bit just to darken that sky up a little bit to like a minus six. And now with that same tool, the picker, click on this and I'm going to click on this area of the sky right here to add a little bit more blue and click OK. And see how that sky got a little bit more blue? That's pretty cool, right? And next it'll be highlight, so I'll click on the highlight button. And I'm going to darken up the highlights a little bit. I'm going to drag this to the left to like a minus 24, like right there. And now I want to do a little bit of color grading. I'm just going to come up here and click like right about here and see how it just adds a nice little orange glow up in here, which is really nice. Now check it out. Here's my before and here's my after. And then if we click the before after button, we can see we started here and now we're here. So we're at a really good starting point. And now we could start working on this image. And I look for things that are wrong with the image and try to fix those first. 
And then I look down here at the bottom and we see the remains of these trees here. Now, remember, this is Mount St. Helens. Maybe they were burned out. So I thought they'd be interesting to keep in the image, but they're too light and I want to darken them up. But now I look at my notes and it says light and midtone. So I better do that first before I work on these tree remains. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is the color grading tools in the way. Click the X. Nothing changes here. Click on the luminosity mask button. And what I like to do here is use a midtones one. This is a great way to get a nice subtle lightening of the midtones. So we'll click that. Now I usually like to output that to like a curves adjustment layer. It could be levels. It doesn't matter. I'm just using it for a blend mode and then I'll change the blend mode to screen just like that and then what I want to do is I want to add a pop of contrast here now I'm going to come up here to the presets right now it's on default there's no adjustment there and I'm going to click on strong contrast and I just get a little bit of contrast I know it says strong contrast but remember it's using this midtones 3 mask so if I click the double arrow icon you can see that mask is blocking a lot. It's only targeting midtones one. Okay, so click this button again. But let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But see that nice little bit of lightning and that little extra contrast really helps. And now we can start to work on these tree remains to darken them down a bit. Okay, the first thing I need to do is create a mask. So I'm going to come up here and click on the luminosity mask button. Now these are light tones. That's a lights one. Let's see what a lights two does. Okay, I think I'm going to go with the lights one, but I'm going to try different channels here. Right now we're in RGB. We could look at the red channel. Okay, here's the green channel. I'm looking for more separation here. Here's the blue channel. There's a lot of separation there. Cyan, about the same. Here's magenta, not good. Here's yellow, not good. So I think I'm going to use blue, but I'm going to use a levels adjustment to just tighten that up. So I'll start out by dragging this mid-tone slider to the right, actually. I'm going to take the shadow slider and drag it in a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this highlight slider over to somewhere right around in there. I think that should be pretty good, maybe right there. See, I'm looking for these lighter tones here. I'm going to output that to a burn tool. Now it has two sides. It has a 50% gray side, a transparent side. In this case, I'm just going to use the... Uh, gray side you could use either it wouldn't really matter okay so here we go and i have a burn tool and you can see i have a black brush and i want to put my opacity at like 30 percent right now it's at 65 percent as you can see up here i'm going to type my three key that gives me 30 percent and what i'm just going to do at this point is just darken this down every time i lift my brush and i am every time you see me paint i've lifted my brush and i'm just basically darkening down these light areas just so they're not quite as predominant our eyes won't really want to go to these as much and just like that let's get this little guy over in here then i'm going to come over in here and let's just darken these guys up a little bit like so just like that maybe here and here and here maybe hit this again that's good but as i always say take your time and get it right now here is the before and here's the after, but see our eyes are not going to go there as much right now. So that is that. And now as I study the image, I'm looking at all the little shadowy areas in here, which are really nice. And even down in here, and I just want to darken them up, burn them a little bit. So what I'll do is, and I've been really enjoying using uh, Blend If for burning. It gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of chance to really, you know, narrow in on the area you want to burn so we're going to click this button right here and let's create a mask now blend if has this picker too this is really cool and i'm going to click on this and this is like a zone mask works very similarly and you see this area right in here this kind of reflects the shadows that i'm looking at so i'm going to click right here and click OK. And now you can see the light areas are what I'm looking at. See all these little shadow areas in here. But I can tighten this up a bit. And so what I'll do is I'll take this slider. And I'll start to drag it to the left. And you see how everything gets tightened up. And I'm going to take it over to somewhere like right about here. I think is a good starting point. And now I'm going to output it to a burn tool. This time I'm going to use the left side. Now if I click here I would be painting through a selection. I like this blend if because I can see the areas that I'm getting and then what I'll do is hold my shift key down again that's very important hold your shift key down and click on the on the right side and that's the transparent layer right and I got a black brush 
with a blend if layer adjustment. And this time I want to use a smaller opacity for my brush, so I'm going to type my one key for 10%. And now we're going to start to paint in those shadows. And I can be pretty loose here. See, I'm just going to start painting on these shadowy areas. I may end up uh, speeding up this video a little bit because, you know what, you don't want to sit here all day and watch me. And I will vary my brush size. And if you lift your brush and go over again, you know, it'll um, make the effect a little bit stronger. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video. And again, I'm just looking for the shadow areas, just painting away. Now, I will uh, vary my brush size from time to time. And um, again, every time I lift that brush and then paint again, I will darken those areas up. And I'm getting even these little foreground areas up in here. And this is really going to help. And there we go. Well, let's take a look. I'm going to shut this layer off by clicking on this eyeball. Here is before the burning and here is after. But see that nice depth I get in there and it builds up some of the contrast. If I come and click on the edit blend if button here and you see the double magenta arrow here. If I click this, you can see there are the areas that I've targeted. Now, if I uncheck gray, that would be shutting the blend if off. And then look at the paint strokes when I shut this off. See how they're, you know, they're pretty wide in some areas, but when I turn this on, you can see that the blend if is targeting those areas. So that's pretty cool. And if I felt I needed to tighten that up a little bit, I could take this slider and start to bump it into the left. Now, I don't want to go the whole way here because you want to maintain a little bit of feathering here, but something like that right there. Now, let's shut this off. Here is the before and the after, but dodging and burning with edit blend if is really great. I missed a couple little spots I wanted to get up here in this area of the mountain, okay? And I found out a little tip. Your tilde key on your keyboard, it looks like that little wavy line. It's uh, not sure where it would be in your keyboard, but it's usually under the escape key on a Mac. If you hold that down, you can erase if you want too strong in an area. In other words, while you're holding it down, you are erasing. When you release it, then you're burning again. So pretty cool little tip. Now, as I study the image, I feel like I need a little bit more saturation just in the weaker colors. So to do that, I'm going to X out of Edit Blend If. Nothing changes there. Click on the Saturation Vibrance Mask button. And I'm looking for weak colors, so that would be Vibrant. So I'm going to click on Vibrance 1. Now, I generally use Vibrance 4. Here's Vibrance 2. You can see all the light areas will be getting the effect, and that's way too broad. I'm going to go to 3, and now I'll go to 4, and I think 4 is going to be it. Now, all I need to do is I'll put that to a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking this button right here. And you can see there's my mask right there on the layer. Now, you may ask yourself, why don't you just use a vibrance adjustment layer? Believe me, it does not give the same results. You could try it for yourself to see, but it, you will not get the same results that I'm going to show you right now. Now, the great thing about the hue saturation adjustment layer is, see here the drop down right now where I'm master for overall saturation. But if you click here, I could go to reds, yellows, greens, and so on. All these different colors, you don't get that in a vibrance adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on reds first. And I'm going to bump up the reds. I'm going to take this to the right. And I'm going to stop here at like 35, right there. And then click on the drop down again. Now we'll go to yellows. And I'll increase the saturation in the yellows to say somewhere right about there. I'm going to go to greens. And I'll just increase the greens a little bit to say somewhere right around 20, right there. And now let's go back up. And now I'm going to work on blues. And I'll increase the blue saturation. Let's go up to like 31. Now let's check it out. So far, here's the before and here's the after, but isn't that nice? And now let's go back up here to master. And I'll take the overall master up to like 20, I think is good. And now check it out. Here's the before and here's the after, but quite a big improvement, all with the help of this beautiful vibrance mask. Now check this out. If I were to disable this mask by clicking this X, this is what it would look like. Pretty horrible, right? But now through that vibrance mask, I'll click the X again. It looks like this. When you're using a vibrance mask, I recommend to start out with your colors, work on your different colors, the ones that seem to help. And then when you're done, then go back to master and then, you know, 
either increase the master or decrease it. And I think you'll get the best results that way. And also you have the added bonus of hue and lightness. You may want to shift the hue of a color one way or the other, or maybe lighten it or darken it a little bit with the lightness slider. So you have that to work with as well if you need it. Next up, a little dodging. I'm going to dodge some of the lighter areas on the image. Now to do that, we're going to go back up and click on this button right here for blend if. And this is where we can generate a blend if mask, but I will output it by shift clicking on the dodge tool. So I won't use the mask. I will be using blend if on the layer, but I'll use this mask here to help me find the mask I want. Now that is lights one. And what I want to do is take this slider here and just start to drag it to the right. And as you can see, as I drag it over, see I'm targeting these lighter areas are the areas that I want to target, like the light area. So I'm just moving it over and I'll stop here. And I think that's around the lights one and a half. And now all I need to do is output this to a dodge tool and I'm going to hold my shift key down. Remember that. Don't forget that one. Shift and then I'm going to click the right side here, the dodge tool. And I'm painting on a blank transparent pixel layer. And now I have, uh, I still have a 10% brush and I'll start out with that. And I'm just looking for like light areas that I can just lighten up a little bit. And again, I may end up speeding up the video so you don't have to spend all day watching me paint light areas on here. Okay, and now I sped the video up. Again, I'm looking for light areas. Every time you lift that brush and paint again, it'll get stronger. And I think at one point here, I end up changing my brush to like, 20% opacity by typing the two key because I felt like I needed it to be a little bit stronger. Yeah, right now it's all at 20% opacity. And I'll even get some of these uh, areas in the front foreground here, lighten them up. I held my tilde key down at one point just to erase off an area that I went too strong. That tilde key is a great option. It really helps in dodging and burning. And there we go. Okay, now here's the before. And here is the after, but just some nice lightning there. Now you can always pull your opacity back if you went too strong. And remember, you can come and click on this edit blend if button here. And if I click on the double arrow, you can see the areas of magenta where I've actually painted. And if I shut off the blend if by clicking this checkbox here, you can see how strong those adjustments are. Can you see that? But watch when I turn edit blend if on, it just really sculpts them and puts them right where they need to be which is one of the beautiful features of edit blend if and dodging and burning. And now if I click the double arrow again, we're back to my image. And again, here is the before and here is the after. So I like it. I'm going to X out of edit blend if. And now what is next? Well, I'm glad I asked myself, but what is next is soft pop. So let's click on the soft pop button. If you don't have your actions open, you can click the button on either the combo or CX panel, the TK button right here. And then we're going to click on soft pop. And there it is now. It's really strong. Now here's the before and here's the after. Now, of course, I could take the opacity back. But here's another great feature of edit blend if. So I'm going to click on edit blend if right here, the button, click it. And now I could sample it out on different uh, values like uh, how about lights one. Here's lights one. Here's lights two. Then I could try midtones like here's midtones three, midtones two. And then how about darks? Here's darks one. I'm liking this direction. Here's darks two. Here's darks three. Okay, so it really tames it down, right? And I'm still at 100%. Here is the before and here is the after. So I like that. I could even try darks four. It'll tone down even more. Here's the before and here's the after. But you know what? I think I like darks three. So I'm going to go to darks three. But it gives me a little pop of color and it gives me a pop of detail. So I like the soft pop. Hence the name soft pop. So before and after. And then you always have the opacity. You can pull this back if it's too strong. But just so you can see it in the video, I'm going to leave it up at 100%. We're almost done. I think I want to do a final balance and contrast. Okay, just minimal adjustments. So I'm going to X out of blend if here. I'm going to go to luminosity masks and I'm doing the overall image. I'm just going to get a midtones three to protect me from clipping highlights and shadows. Or I could have used blend if midtones three. You know, I'm just showing you different ways that you can do things. There's many ways of doing the same thing inside of Photoshop and also with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'm going to output that to a color grading tool by clicking this button right here. And I'll start with midtones. I'm going to click the midtone button. I just want to open up the midtones a little bit to like a plus eight right there, just a little bit. And now we'll go to the shadows. 
I'll click the shadows button and I'll just pull that back a little bit to like a minus three right there. And now we're going to go to highlights and I'm going to open up the highlights to like right here, plus 20. So here's the before and here's the after, but see just a nice subtle lightening of the overall image. And I think it really looks pretty, even though it is a scary volcano. Now, as for all good landscape images, they usually need some kind of a vignette. So I'm going to use my basic vignette in my TK Actions. Again, if your actions aren't open, click the TK button and click Vignette. And you're going to get a Gaussian Blur dialog come up, and it's going to give you a radius. Just click OK. It's usually just perfect. It defaults at 30% opacity on the layer in a multiply blend mode. I'm going to X out of the color grading tool because I'm going to get my new best friend, the blend if, edit blend if. So I'm going to click right here. And what I want to do is protect it from getting on darks, the very dark darks, which are darks one. So this first button here is no darks one, and this is no darks two. So I'm going to click no darks one and it protects my darkest darks. Okay, so here is the before, and here is the after, just a nice subtle vignette. I just have to take care of one final thing. You see right up here, this area, this light area up here, it looks a little bit overboard, so I can fix that. I can go back to that original balance and contrast layer because that's where it's coming from click on the layer mask itself and grab a black brush so click on the black brush button right here and change your opacity to 20 percent if it's not 20 percent type your two key and then simply just paint on this and it'll tone this down you don't have to worry about getting up into the sky and that just tones it down a little bit so we're just painting on that mask. And now let's take a look. Here's our overall before. So I'm going to click on the before after button. Here's before we started out here. And now we end up here. And I'm really happy. And I hope you give this edit a try. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. And that always makes me sad. But thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this edit today. Don't forget to download the image and the PDF notes. And don't forget to please like share, subscribe, click that bell notification icon and click all for all notifications. So you'll receive all of my notifications. You'll know every time I upload a new tutorial and don't forget to get that new gen fill panel. It's absolutely free. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.